Well, as Josh has read from Matthew 4 and verse 19, the, the operative word this morning is on follow. And when you go back and you look at the original language, to follow means to accompany. It means to join. It means to go along beside. And when we look at what Jesus did here in Matthew chapter 4, beginning in verse 18 and following on through a couple more verses, there are three operative words that we want to think about this morning. And those are come after me. Let's look at what Jesus did in Matthew 4 verse 18 and read through verse 22. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother. They were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother. In the boat was Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And immediately they left all, they left the boat and their father, and they followed him. I, you know, I want you to think about what Jesus said in Matthew 4, verse 14, uh, verse 19. Those first two words, I will. I will do something special for you, tremendous for you, exceptional for you, if you will but come after me. There's a little more of a lengthy reading here that I think will help us to understand what Jesus was doing when he was calling these men to follow him. And it's in Luke chapter 5, 1 through 11. And I want you to take your Bibles and open there to that passage and look with me at these 11 verses. So it was. As the multitudes pressed about him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret, or the sea of. And he saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. And asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the multitudes from the boat. Now you got to get this picture in your mind. He pushed off a little bit from the shore. But it's still where Jesus can talk and communicate with them. And he begins to teach them. He stopped speaking and he said to Simon, this is Peter. He said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. You know, Simon did what... We do from time to time. We, we make excuses. And here's what he said. But master, I, we, we, we've toiled all night long. We've labored all night long. We've worked all night, night long. And we've caught nothing. Here's the key. Nevertheless, at your word, and here are these two words again, I will let down my net. And notice what happened after Simon Peter did what Jesus asked him to do. Verse 6, and when they had done this, they caught a great, not a few, not many, not a lot, but they caught a great number of fish, so many that their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats. As a matter of fact, so many fish were in the boats, they began to sink. When Simon and Peter saw it, he fell down at the knees of Jesus, and he said, Depart from me, O Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. Now watch 10, a very key verse. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. You know, the thing I love about Jesus is, is he is willing to equip us for the mission at hand. And he was ready to equip each and every one of these apostles and these disciples with they would be endued with power from on high. They would have all the necessary ingredients they would need to go out here and catch men. When you go back to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 20, and we continue reading the original calling here of these four fishermen. Verse 20 says, in Matthew 4, verse 20, they immediately left their nets and followed him. Now I want you to stop and, and think with me about, about this. This was their vocation. This is what they did. 
This was their livelihood. This is the way they fed their families. And the Bible tells us here that they left everything behind. Matthew 19 and verse 27 also says, So he said to Peter, and Peter was willing to forsake all in order to follow him. Can you imagine today being in the situation that you're in and being called upon to follow Jesus and come after Jesus and accompany Jesus and join Jesus, but, but leave your job behind? Leave some of your family members behind? Leave your hobbies behind? Leave the things you like to do behind? Can you just, in, in the mindset, can you imagine what must have been going through the heads of Peter, Andrew, James, and John when, when Jesus said this? Well, one of the things Jesus is going to do, he's going to be to them and for them a first-hand witness. And so I want us to continue reading there in Matthew 4, 23 through 25, to find out exactly what Jesus did in their presence so they would know that he was the real deal. All right? So take your Bibles with me and let's look at Matthew 4, 23 to 25. And Jesus went about all Galilee, number one, teaching in their synagogues, number two, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and number three, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. You know what that's going to do? That's going to make Jesus famous. Now, that wasn't his intent, but verse 24 says, Then his fame went throughout all Syria. And what were people doing? They were bringing to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, and those paralytics. And it says he healed them all. He healed all of them. And what were Peter, Andrew, James, and John, and all of the apostles, and all these disciples, what were they doing? They were witnessing what Jesus was able to do. And so the Bible tells us in verse 25 that as a result of this, great multitudes followed him. They came from Galilee and Decapolis. They came from Jerusalem and Judea. And they came from beyond the Jordan to see what Jesus was doing. But he did this primarily at the outset to let his disciples and apostles know that if you come after me, you're going to see astonishing and amazing things that you've never seen before. What does fellowship entail? Well, I want you to take your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. And before we read 24, we're actually going to go back and read 21 through 23. And you will remember, if you're a biblical student, you will remember when you get to Matthew chapter 16, the questions were being asked, who is this guy that he's able to do the things that he's able to do? And Peter was the one who boasted by saying, hey, listen, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And after Jesus had said them, he promised to build his church. And after that, we read something that is absolutely fascinating in 21 through 23. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples and his apostles that he had to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter, he, he took him aside. He, he called him off to the side. He says, you know, I know you're talking to these disciples and all these other people, but I, I, got, I got to have a private conversation with you real quick. He took him aside and he, he began to rebuke Jesus. And he says, far be it from you, Lord, that this should happen to you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Peter. You're, you're thinking in fleshly, secular, earthly terms. You're, you're, you're thinking about what's good for, for here and now. You're not, you're not looking at the big picture. You're, you're not looking at the real picture. And, you know, sometimes we have a tendency to do that ourselves. We, 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 we look at, at, at today, and we don't expand our horizons, and, and we don't look beyond this. And Jesus is going to teach them now, listen, this is what fellowship means. This is what it entails. This is the sum and the substance of, of coming after me. And so he's going to mention three things as we read Matthew 16 and verse 24. Then Jesus said to them, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Well, let's talk about those three things. Let's talk about the three things that Jesus mentioned there. When, when you go back to the original language, to deny self in the Greek meant to completely disown disassociate, maybe to separate from. 
And, and how hard is it when, when you and I look in the mirror that, that we realize that today I'm looking at my number one challenge. Today I'm looking at my number one enemy. I and mean, this is it. The, the denial of self, there'll, there'll never be anything any more difficult. There'll never be anything harder to do than, than to look into that mirror and say, you know what, today I have to deny myself. And you know what, we have to do it every single day. We have to completely disown our, our agenda, our ideas, our philosophies, our, our dreams, our aspirations, and our goals, and, and, and look what's for the greater good. And, and so we, we have to separate ourselves, and it's a challenge to do. And, and we're called upon to do that if we're going to come after me, as Jesus calls us to do. And those disciples had to learn that. They had to leave it all behind. Peter said, Lord, we've left all. We've forsaken everything in order to follow you. And Jesus says, wait a minute, here's what you need to remember. I might ask you for a sacrifice, but you need to see it this way. You're not making a sacrifice near as much as you're making an investment. You're making an investment. And exactly what Adam said and, and, and Ralph Young said in our earlier service, when, when, when you put your financial contribution in the collection plate, you, you're not making a sacrifice near as much as you're making an investment. You're making an investment in the greatest work God has called us to do. But how does it begin? With a denial of self. But number two, he says, you, you got to take up your cross. you got, you got to take up your cross. You know, I realize today that every person in this room has a different cross to bear. One of the places where we lived, we had a godly lady. She came to every service wonderful example for her children and, and for her husband. But, but her cross was that her husband would never attend worship with her. He wouldn't come. And, and she would agonize over that and she would ask me, you know, what, what can I do? And, and I said, well, you, you're doing the very best thing you can do right now. You, you're coming. You're showing him what it means to you and, and what it's like to, to follow Jesus and to come after him. That, that, that's what you're doing. I said, you might leave some books, or booklets, or tracts. You might have the Bible open to a, a specific place. And, and when you leave the house and when you're at worship and he sits down in his chair, he might, he might pick that stuff up and read it and begin to notice it and recognize that if it's this important to you, maybe it needs to be like that to me. And it reminds me of, the, as you know, the Johnny and Charlene Ford story. The story that, that we've told so many times and it's so very powerful that, that, that Charlene wanted to come to worship so bad that, that, that she, she was incapable of, of, of driving herself. And she got out in that vehicle one day and man, she was, she was revving that engine and she was acting crazy with that vehicle because she didn't know whether to put it in reverse, park, neutral, or drive, or second or third. And Johnny, come out here, what are you doing, Charlene? You're going to tear up my truck. If it means that much to you, all right, I'll start going. And the man eventually became a leader in the Lord's church. Why? Because she bore her cross. I, I can tell you about a, uh, a man that I knew, a young man, I'm sorry, a boy that I knew, take that back, in, in Huntsville, Alabama. When I was in third, fourth, and fifth grade, I went to Madison Academy, a great Christian school there, in that, similar uh, to FCA. Just so many common things there, and uh, such a wonderful school. And, and I remember uh, there was a, a boy in one of my classes. His name was Donnie. And, and just this week, I was reminded of Donnie when my, my brother sent me a picture of him. And I said, who in the world is that? He said, well, that's Donnie Gardner. Donnie, as a matter of fact, I, I saw Donnie the other day, and he said, how's your brother Tom? I'm thinking, who in the world are you? How do you remember me 55 years later? How do, how do you know that? Donnie has been in a wheelchair his whole life. That's his cross. And today, successful. I mean, Huntsville is one of the leading cities in the United States of America. They're, 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 the FBI is going to host their number two headquarters in Huntsville, Alabama. They're going to bring about 500 agents in there. It's Redstone Arsenal. It's Space Museum. That, that town is growing quicker than, than maybe any town in America. And you know what? Donnie's right in the middle of it. And I'll tell you the best thing about Donnie to this day. He is a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. What's, what's your cross? 
I, I, don't, know, I don't know what it is. It, it might be, and, and you can fill in the blank, and, and you're, you're, nobody in this room knows, you, you, but you're carrying this cross. And man, it's heavy, and it's heavy to bear. But Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. But I love that old cross. And, and there it is. Your cross might be one where you have to suffer. But you'll be rewarded in the future. And then the third thing he mentions in this passage is just, it, it's a choice. I mean, really, let, let's go back to Matthew chapter 10. And, and I'm going to read 32, 33. I'm going to read 38 and 39. And I'm going to make some comments about some verses in between there. But, but, but I want you to listen to this about, about this being a choice today. To, to follow Jesus is a choice. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. Watch this now. But whoever denies me, that's a choice. Whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father which is in heaven. I mean, we have the choice either to confess him or deny him. That, that's the choice. That's the choice that we make. When he says, take up your cross, I want you to look at verse 38. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. If you don't take up your cross, he says, you're not, you're not worthy of me. It may be, it may be the cross of, of suffering and shame, but if you don't take it up, he says, you're not worthy of me. He goes on to say in the preceding verses 36, a man's foes or enemies might be those of his own, of his own household. He says in verse 37, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And, and he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. And, and then look at verse 39. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake shall find it. I mean, there are the big three. I mean, there they are. Here, here's what it means to follow Jesus. Here's what it means to be a disciple of the Lord. It means I have to deny myself. It means I have to take up my cross. It means I have to make the choice and the determination to follow Jesus. Now, you've heard me say this many times, and you, you'll hear me say it many times again if I live. You've probably heard me say it at memorial services more than any other place. We have to prepare in our short home for our long home. And that's exactly what Jesus was saying there in Matthew 10 and verse 39. I mean, make the choice. Understand that we prepare in this temporal short home for our long home. And it's a choice. And all of us are going to make that choice today. I want to ask you a question. If we continue reading in Matthew 16, Jesus asked the question about discipleship and fellowship. He said, what do you do if you gain the whole world, but you lose your soul? What, 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 what have you actually gained? What, what, what do you really have? I mean, think about it. Here you have this job out here, man. You're at the, you're at the apex of your job, and you know you got a lot of people under you, and you, you man, you, you're in control. I mean, really. And, and you say, man, you know, look at me. I've got all these people under me. Have you, have you looked at me lately? What if you? What if that position causes you to lose your soul? What What's it been worth to you? What What, what if this year you you get a six figure bonus at, at the end of the year? What if that causes you to lose your soul? See, what do you gain, Jesus says, if you lose your soul? What, what, what really have you, have you gained in the process? And then he goes on to ask another question in that same verse. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I mean, that's it. That's the sum and substance. The soul is the most important thing that we have a possession of. And so here's the motivation. As you go to Matthew 16, and we keep reading about discipleship, Jesus is going to stop and pause, and he's going to say, listen, here, here, here's what I want you to know of the motivation. To deny self, take up the cross, and follow me, here, here's the motivation. You ready for this? Got your seatbelt on? It's verse 27. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and he will reward each one according to his works. You see, as I prepare in my short home for my long home, 
What's going to happen? Someday Jesus is going to come back in the clouds and we're going to go up and meet the Lord in the air and thus shall we always be with the Lord. But for those who made the choice in their temporal home to reject him, he's going to have to say, depart from me. I never knew you. And so make the right choice. Make your calling and election sure because he is coming and it's closer than it's ever been before.